It's always good to talk to prolific Melbourne filmmaker Nathan Hill about his films. And I think the last time we spoke was about I Portrait. But it's now my great pleasure to be speaking to Nathan about his latest film, Lady Terror. Lady, uh, Lady Terror, interesting film. Uh, Nathan, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you so much, Pete. Good to see you again. Tell me about the uh, inspiration behind this uh, rather interesting thriller. Yeah, look, it's an interesting one. I mean, I guess my writing and my my mindset's always in that kind of thriller genre. But this one was special because, you know, we hit lockdown and I thought to myself, wow, am I even going to be able to make another film? And if I do, what would it be <laughs> if it was my last? And because I technically shot this one in between those two big Melbourne lockdowns, I think there was like a month or two month period. Uh-huh. And I shot then by the skin of my teeth sort of thing, thinking, okay, I've got everything in the can. I'll spend the next part of lockdown editing so I won't I won't go mad. You know, I've got something to do. <laughs> um, and so if you look into my history, once upon a time I had a movie with Corey Haim attached and then unfortunately he passed away and it was really a dream project. And one of his films I loved, which was called Blown Away, uh, it just sort of stuck with me. So I, I tried to make my own uh, interpretation of that film, but giving it, completely my spin um thinking that it might be the last um and i don't want to spoil it for anyone but you know the last scene is kind of poignant in respect to if it was the last there's a little bit of a message there (laughs) yep so that's pretty much why okay okay so putting the storyline script together um with a a number of different encounters if we put it that way especially with women um very interesting uh sort of developments there (laughs) yeah definitely and uh you know my usual suspects uh my co-writers you know came on board to help me develop it and it was probably like most of my stuff, though. It's been in the writing for at least a year before I go into kind of proper pre-production. I don't rush into it. And, uh, you know, I just had some press which said that the story was great and very co- coherent and and better than the last. So that kind of made me feel good. Um, but, yeah, casting is always the hardest part, trying to find not only uh, a human being that matches up, but, you know, also a, a, a screen partner and someone that also likes the context and is kind of willing to take the gloves off and, and go, go into the ring with me and battle it out. You know, it's, it takes a certain individual. Not everyone can do it either. I understand that. <laughs> and, and, yes, you've got some very uh, interesting actors there who uh, are really, you know, a, a good part of your film. They, they really contribute and so on. Tell me about finding your cast. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, I thought it was important to again, being the 10th film and possibly the last at that point to get, you know, some of my alumni, which which is really um, some A.R. Gento and Trisha DeVisha, who have been with me for many years. So I wanted to have half where it was NHP actors and then the other half was new. So I wanted to try and bring in um, a little bit of new age as well, which is where uh, Felita and Shalice came in. But it was really 50-50, so it was half old school, half new school. And, uh, yeah, luckily for me, it worked. Yeah, yeah, it, it certainly does, especially your uh, your partner. You play a, a lawyer and uh, the the uh, woman who uh, aspires to be a private investigator, which I found very yes. interesting, that uh, almost film noirish sort of uh, relationship there. Yeah, and with the PI as well, it was specific because... I've played the PI myself in a few films and when I wrote that part, it was kind of a passing the baton almost. And so when, when I had Samay play that, uh, almost like an understudy, she was, she was playing that character that you would sort of generically see in a lot of my films. And then I diverted slightly just to kind of, I guess, give it a new spin and make it um, not too repetitive of my other work. Uh-huh, okay. I, I noticed yeah. some echoes of uh, Postman Always Rings Twice, Double Indemnity, that oh, sort nice. of, yeah, yeah. Nice. So I gather that's the sort of style that, that you're going for yeah. again. Yeah. Definitely. You know, the basic instinct never leaves me. 
um, The Blown Away with Corey Haim, um, road movies like Red Rock West, some old Nicolas Cage stuff, some Dennis Hopper stuff. Um, I don't know, Paris Trout came to mind. Um, yeah, really those kind of 90s thrillers that I, that, I, that had a big impact on me, uh, you know, growing up and, uh, and, and, and a big impact on my writing over the years. The films I love, really. I, what I was saying to someone the other day, I like real heroes. I love films like Drive where Ryan Gosling's playing uh, a real hero uh, in real life, a, can, a character that you could somewhat relate to or believe exists. I would prefer that in a psychological thriller than a kind of DC or Marvel film where we already know it's fake and the suspension of disbelief is just, it's just not there, you know. Fair enough. No, fair comment. I must, just to spoil aside, I noticed in the credits an actor called Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Audrey's, a, yeah, it's a funny one. Audrey's, uh, it's her real name. She's Scottish. And uh, when we met in the audition process, I really liked her and she's a really good actor. And we had a bit of a laugh. She said that, you know, it kind of, it, for her, it's a blessing and a curse um, <laughs> having that name. Uh, uh, but we just kind of ran with it. I thought it was funny. The other thing is too, if I had have had a, she had a bit part, but if she had have had, have had top billing, that may have even kind of, I think, helped the sales. If that name popped up, you'd be, it would make you double take, I think, and go, hang Hang on a minute. What's going on? What is this, the lost film or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, of course, she would have flown all the way to Australia to be in Taylor's Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. And that was a stroke of good luck as well because Adam, who's playing kind of the buddy role, um, he works in security and he had once upon a time, I think, worked there. And so he was able, because I, I was sort of desperate for some locations because it was during that lockdown period. It was very difficult um, and I said, I, you know, said to him in a conversation, I need a few things. And he said, oh, we can we can get that at Taylor's. So um, that's really thanks to Adam Ramsey for helping me get some of those major locations. Otherwise, I, I don't know where I would have gone during that period of time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's interesting the way you, you did that. You, you uh, It looks like a, an emerging major suburb now. So it's. <laughs> it looks... Yeah. <laughs> It's a booming northwest <laughs> suburb. That's right. I like that's it. Right. And I love going to new places. You know, I love to, there's so much of Melbourne that still hasn't been seen. You know, I've been making films here for so long. And, mm. uh, there's so there's so much terrain. You know, quite often I'll be driving around and go, wow, you know, that'd look amazing in a movie. And, you know, I mean, 10 features later, and you, you, I don't think I've repeated the locations, if, if at all, you know, maybe once or twice in a cafe or something. But, um Every film is is showcasing Melbourne in a different light, which is uh, which is amazing because I don't think people realise how big it is. You know, yes. it's, there's a lot of possibilities. Absolutely. So, I mean, as you say, this is your tenth film. I mean, how do you get the wherewithal, the production behind you, financing, and so on, to be able to keep making these films? Well, I guess I've been lucky because I finally hit that point where I've hit my stride, and as you know, being so prolific and having such good friends i've been able to to shoot relatively cheaply um it's more about the post-production but i've kind of finally reached a point where distributors are, are starting to throw me a bone and and even part finance so and then kind of take the reins i mean i can make a film now and kind of offload it to a distro and they'll do the rest i don't have to worry about the marketing or the mastering or any of that sort of stuff. So um, I'm kind of, I guess, at that top echelon of indie film where whatever I make, I can get it released. And it's a very nice place to be because, as we know, that's a very hard thing to do and it's taken me a very long time. So, and I don't mind investing in my own films if it's, if it's, if, you know, if it's not going to be too much money. If I know I'm going to get it back or at least break even, I will do it just as a passion. That's fine. Sure, and it's great to have that passion. So, <laughs> I, I think because you know, with me, I love to own the work. I mean, I've never liked crowdfunding, for example, where you've got to credit a hundred people. You know, it's I, I think it, and and it actually takes more time to to thank them and pay them back. It's more work. So mm. I, I'd rather, um, you know, sort of knuckle down, find the financing myself, or even just work harder myself to own the material, and then it's easy to offload it to the distributor. I think when you start bringing in too many co-producers and associates, it just, it's a bit of a mess. And to be honest, I don't think it's necessary on in India. I mean, if you're making a film under 500,000, you're in the same playing field. It doesn't matter if you're sort of 
making a film for 1,000, 2, 10, 50, 100, 250, if it's under 500,000, it's deemed low budget. And so it doesn't really matter what you spend. You've just got to make sure it's a bloody good story and that a, a distro has an interest before you make it. You know what I mean? I understand. So, okay, very interesting to hear that. Uh, tell mm. me about the the way you shoot, uh, because I gather you use a single camera and 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 filming yourself is always a, an interesting uh, task. <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm so specific at, with how I want the end product to be, and I've mapped it out so much in so much time in advance. And then, for example, with that film, I had Dear Taylor and Dear's uh shot me as an actor and even directed me herself so it's very easy to 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 for me anyway to work with her particularly on that film where we know each other's style so well that we don't have to even communicate very much the reason why i use single camera on that one was because well first of all we had a, a really good camera which was an ursa uh and uh worth quite a bit of money and it looked amazing and, and i'm even i've just had another uh, write up with someone saying it looked it looked hollywood so i'm really happy with that um but I don't do a lot of takes so because I know exactly how I want to do it and I know how to work with her. And so we're able to kind of go in and, you know, we would only do one to th if, if two, maybe three takes. You know, with my stuff, the funny thing is, is I usually get the lightning in a bottle on the first take. There's something about the first take, which is, I guess, fresh and a little bit enigmatic. And I find with my takes, they, they don't get worse, but they don't get better. It's usually those first few where the energy pops. And I, I go with that. And it's just easier for everyone across the board. And, you know, I'm, I'm not Kubrick, so I'm not going to do 87 takes and I, and I can't afford it. <laughs> you know? Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and speaking of post-production, the music score sounds really good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Jamie Murgatroyd, who's really, uh, you know, a bit of a brother in arms. I think we must have done, oh, God, 10, even maybe 20 projects together now. We've been scoring together for, I think, just over 10 years, and he's based in Western Australia, but he does quite a lot of, of film score. Uh, so well, I can always rely on him. And I guess we've also progressed and got to know each other's style over time. So the, those compositions are getting a little bit better each time as well, which is nice. Okay. Now, uh, uh, an important aspect of uh, any film is that people can see it. Tell me about the way Lady Terror can be seen. Well, the great thing with Terror is that it, it ticks all the boxes as far as indie level goes. So you can watch it on Microsoft, you can watch it on YouTube movies, you can watch it on Apple TV, on Google Play, on Prime. Uh, and because they call me the Renaissance man, I still do physical. So there'll be DVD and Blu-ray online sales. Um, so yeah, pretty much in all of those pl platforms. Uh, Netflix and Stan is kind of what I would say the next level. I have been an associate producer on a movie that was on stand recently. I acted in another one that is uh, being pitched to Netflix. So we'll see how we go. There is, for people who want to know, you know, as a filmmaker, there's a little bit more money when you go into those platforms. Uh, but but just being online, even even YouTube movie movies and uh, and Prime is is a big win. Okay, no, that's good because it's important that uh, the films that you make are out there, seen, so that uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, uh, there really is no point. You've got to have that. You've got to be online, uh, and the physical stuff for me is really just a bonus because I'm old school. I love to still hold the you know the product in my hand, but it's it's not even really necessary. And now, so uh, you, you would very even be lucky to make any money doing physical. It's more of a passion. Um, so if you can get a bit back on on digital, then, you know, you're okay. But you've also got to experiment. I mean, I'm in a position now where I've done so many movies, I kind of know what to and what not to do. Um, so that, but that, that's obviously taken me a long time. So there have been products um, or projects in the past where, uh, you know, I did waste money or I did waste time or I didn't understand um, uh, what the reach might be. So I have one film that I've experimented with, with just about in every way, every way possible to just even figure out the market and how it works. That's a whole nother level. Okay. Okay. Again, very interesting to hear that process. Uh, would the film have some currency or your other films overseas? I mean, I can see American independent market or that sort of thing might be possible. Yeah. Definitely. The, 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 the audience uh, and market for me currently is North America. Uh, and that seems to be where my stuff is being received. 
the uh, movie that I'm doing now is being actually, believe it or not, pitched more to the Indian market. So I've experimented with Australia, with the UK, with the US, and now India. Uh, and but I would say predominantly that my audience is is in America for a hundred percent. And Australia, look as we know, it's a safe, great place to be and live. But it's just very watered down. You know, it's 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 the level that I play, which is a kind of LA street level, is really popular in LA. In Melbourne, mm, mm, not so much. Mm. You know, and that that's being being honest. Um, in Australia, I think you know you've, you've really got to have the big film to um, to to get that to get that praise, and that's obviously a government funding body body process, and uh, something I've attempted and, and not been successful with yet. But also not even really something where my head's at. You know, I'm kind of happy with what I'm doing at the moment, at least. Yeah, sure. No, I know how difficult it is to get genre films, uh, especially oh, in Australia. Almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. It's you know the Brian the Brian Trenchard Smith days are gone. You yes. know it, it. You know what I mean. So so for some, I mean for me, even if I was my age now in the eighties. I'm absolutely certain I would have been a multi-millionaire. You know, there's no doubt because the stuff I'm making, I mean, even, uh, you know, you could make, you almost guaranteed if you made one horror film in the 80s, you could make a million dollars, you know, from yeah. just from sales. And they'd take, they'd take anything. Um, so obviously, you know, we're, we're in a different world and a different market now. Okay. Okay. You, you've mentioned you're working on another film at the moment. Can, can I ask what it's about? <laughs> um, pretty, pretty early days. Can't say too much. But just uh, it's exciting to know that there is an eleventh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's 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 a bit un, it's under wraps. Uh, okay. I'll surprise you with it. I'll surprise you with it because it's okay. it's it's just uh, it's early days. That is fair enough. No, I, I absolutely yeah. understand. Okay, Thank you. well, uh, it, it's good, Nathan, that your film is out there uh, in, on various platforms. That is great to see. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen anything else of late? That has impressed you? Um, I went and saw The Pope's Exorcist and uh, I kind of like the first half, <laughs> good <laughs> things and bad to say about it. I also saw um, Creed 3 and because I love Rocky and it was the same thing. Some good things, some bad things. I think it's just a kind of, a, it's kind of a, um, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's 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 kind of representative of where I think we're at in the film industry. I think we're in a bit of a grey area at the moment where we're trying to figure out is the feature film still a relevant thing because attention spans and uh, next gen, let's say, you know, they're, they're watching 60 seconds TikTok videos. And I've noticed that the feature film is becoming, particularly with indie film, it's somewhat of a dying art. Like because you're either going to go for a blockbuster at the cinema, or you're going to watch a series on Netflix, or you're going to, you know, occupy yourself with your 60 second videos on whatever social media platform you're on. So it's, it, I think it's in a bit of a grey area. So, um, I mean, they said that about Tom Cruise when he made Maverick. You know, they actually said, you know, you, you saved theatrical distribution. You know, mm. Spielberg even said that. So it's, uh, I think it's still a little bit of a grey area. That's why I felt like my stuff as well is is sometimes considered a bit of a dying art because, I mean, I'm shooting single camera and I'm doing almost a Hitchcockian kind of, kind of stories, um, which is very niche, you know. So uh, Australian audience wouldn't even vibe to that anyway. You know, that's that's probably why it's being more received in America because they 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 don't not only love that genre, but they still embrace some of the other genres that that sometimes maybe we don't. Maybe we're too conservative. I'm not sure what it is. Um, so yeah, I think it's it, it. The films are good, but uh, there has um, I guess the the thing for me will be Tarantino's last. You know, whatever his next film is, is the one I'll have my my sights on. Okay, there, there's an interesting prospect. Okay, so uh, Nathan, is uh, if people want more information about Lady Terror and your other films and uh, uh, and how to see them, all that sort of thing, I gather you have a website people can go to. Oh, yeah, I mean, nhp.net.au, but if you just type my name into Google, honestly, it's all, it'll all come up. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to hear. Your name comes up immediately on Google. I like it. <laughs> 100%. It's all there. IMDb, you know, it's, it's, it's cooking with gas. Don't you worry about that, Pete. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Nathan, great talking to you. We've been speaking to Nathan Hill, who's the director of Lady Terror, available on various platforms right now. Uh, and as always, Nathan, thanks so much for talking with me. Good to see you again, Peter. Thank you. Okay. All the best. Bye-bye. All the best, mate. Thank you.